got a new project started. This one is going to be an 84 foot clear span, 128 foot long farm shop. And what happened was, is this farmer had an existing building, a big storm came and it took down his shop. What we did was we had the wall, a wall put in. It was just post in the ground and we had the wall installed, which is a four foot footing wall. We made a four foot perimeter around the three sides to extend it to 128 long, 84 foot wide. And the front wall, we kept that existing. This whole slab is heated, so it's got irradiant tubes in it. So we didn't want to bust any of it up. We didn't want to extend the front wall because where his tubes come up, it would have been kind of a pain. So it's kind of nice. We get to work on concrete here but we get to work around stuff too. Uh, this houses like the mechanicals and everything, and we didn't want to move this front wall, so we just ended up getting a wall poured right where the existing was. It's gonna be a big one. You can see the trusses there, 84 foot wide, clear span, double plies. Got our Midwest perma columns. It's a big one. Our first day of actual framing. Uh, Greg spent a day the other day cutting up lumber, as you can see. So we got our side walls laid out. These are gonna be two ply trusses, 18 foot walls. Got the Midwest Permacolum brackets. These get anchored in with Titan HD bolts. These things are amazing, the holding power. So we got all of our holes drilled. Greg is zipping those in real quickly. We'll go ahead, get this wall nailed together and we'll get it stood up. The nice thing about this big site is look at all the room we got to work with. Over at Jimmy's with 20 foot walls, 40 foot side, we only had, when the walls were laying down, we only had 20 foot on the other side. So we couldn't build everything and then stand it here. We can build almost everything and then stand it up. Only thing I gotta do is I really, those trusses are huge, 84 foot trusses. I really wanna pick them up drive them, make a ramp right here, drive right over the wall and straight down. I want to start on that end and I want to work this way. So that's my current plan. High torque from Milwaukee. I can't wait to get their new one key high torque. So you can spec. So you can spec the exact torque that you put on a fastener. I have no doubt there's probably I should maybe have a torque wrench, I don't know. I've been doing these for four years. It's amazing how rigid these are when they're bolted in. And then we'll also come and put another Tapcon in here. This is just temporary to set them. Take a look at this. That's my mega deck. That thing expands out to 20 foot. So it's eight foot wide, 20 foot long. And I just picked up its little brother, the MRT 260. What I wanted this for was, as you can see the difference in size, this lift does not fit up between our trusses when we're eight foot on centers. This one will, which means I don't have to climb on the trusses to run purlins. We can install them all from the safety of the lift. So big investment, yes, uh, about, 40,000 bucks for that. And I don't think you can put a price tag on safety, efficiency, being happy and not overly tired at the end of the day. This one, this one's about six foot wide. You enter from the back and then the front slides out. That gives you the additional four foot. So I think this goes 12 foot. I think it expands to 12 foot. And this one here, it's got the dual slide out. So front and back slide out to give it 20 foot. Big difference. Always go foam filled tires on site. That makes a huge difference. The last thing you want is to go up in the air and your tire to squash under the weight because it's flat. I gotta say, it is really nice working on concrete. When we gotta move our posts just a little bit to get all of our lines to line up, they'll just slide nice and easy. No mud over top of everything. You liking it, Greg? Oh yeah, by the way, that MRT 260, I actually just bought it so I could mount my GoPro on it because I kept having to mount it on my 3394 and that was a real waste of money. So now I got a nice GoPro mount dedicated. 
So what's very important to do when laying out your wall is to make sure you're not building it out of square. What I mean by that is we put our post right in line with the bracket that it's gonna go into, and then we come up to the top and I'll measure off the outside bracket straight over and then I'll move this to be right at 7, 10 and a half, which is the center of this post. That way now, as I move my way down, I will move each post to line up with all of my lines. So you can see here, that post, gotta get moved over. And we'll just work our way down. What we like to do is we like to hang about five posts at a time. So we don't we don't want to build this whole wall, nail it all together, and then try to stand it up all at once. We basically, yeah, 56 foot is about the max amount of wall we'll stand at the same time. So what that means is we'll get all of our stuff laid out like you see. And then, we go through and we, we put an S on the, the joints where we have our splice. And so what we got is that is our fifth post right there. So anything that is attached to that post, that way we nail. Everything that is attached to this post in that way we nail. And the posts or the boards that, um, the boards that splice, we put an S and we just pound a 20 penny nail. And the reason we do this and we don't finish it, we don't always finish it. Actually, a lot of times we do and then we have to come back and pull them. But the reason we do this is so that we can lay out our whole wall, make sure everything is nice and tight, our joints are right where we want them, and then we'll come back, we'll pull out our splice nails, and then we'll stand up the wall in sections, and then We'll hit this nail hole again exactly that way it goes right back where we want it and then we'll finish it with another fresh nail perfect obviously the jumbo nailer throwing in these big old 20 penny ring shank galvanized nails with this diamond coating makes them go in a lot easier and then it makes them hold a lot better than a standard nail. So we got a splice joint. The reason we put an S on there, because even though we know it's a splice joint, and even though we put an S, we still end up nailing those way more than I'd like to admit, and usually it's me because I'm the guy doing the nailing and I'm just getting happy with the nailer. I just come in and pop, pop. Isn't it lovely here in Northern Illinois? We got the hoodies. My buddy at 360 Built sent me out this hoodie here. Nice, really tighten it up. Well, that's a big kick in the pants. I just ran out of nails for the jumbo nailer. which means we got our first wall all nailed, but I left nails at home. So we're about 40 minutes from home. I can either drive home and spend 40 minutes each way, so an hour and a half, or we can start pounding 20 pennies the old fashioned way. My elbow feels great. You ready, Greg? So now that we got the wall pulled, we'll come back to our splice joints. This is where the Martinez comes in handy because it's got this nice nail puller gives you good leverage to pop it free. So now that that's done, this post will go up with these four. We'll lift it right into place. how easy it is now what we do since we've already snapped our line this is 
right down here is right where we'll put the bottom edge of our post. We'll level it up, bolt it, and it's gonna be money, you'll see. Better than the two hammers. Get it? Ah! So once we get that first wall section up, we use, these are Spax power legs, three inch. That's what goes in first, put four each side. And then Greg is usually the guy that does all the drilling because he's really, really good at it, hitting those holes. One time, just boom, boom, right through the middle. Look at that. And then each post, gets two half inch bolts through and that's what will do the final securement down at the post base. When we put our bolts in we always make sure they're going the same way. So there's really no right or wrong way, but whatever we do, we always make sure they go in the same way, not opposite. Why? Really it's just an aesthetic thing. I don't know about you, but if it looks right, it probably is right. And so a customer, if they're going to see your work, make sure it's consistent. Remember that most of the time, you're the authority on the job site. What you do, if it looks right, it probably is. Gotta have big pouches. I don't like coming back to the nail box to fill up. We got our two wall sections up. Greg's finishing up the bolts at the bottom. Now what we gotta do is we gotta join that splice that we took apart. So you can see here, now we put it back together I gotta move this wall that little tiny bit. And then I'll just work my way right up the splice, connect it up. 